here is my pop station. Let's see what I got this time. The skeleton key fossils. I do have my mango plant. But this is actually I kind of wish I waited to get mine. But I do like learning new things. Plants, yes, you may be. Hi everyone, it's Marianne. So yesterday I just posted my August vlog. So I thought I should start on my September vlog. But as much as I enjoyed making that August vlog, it's a lot of footage and a lot to edit. And I tried filming a day in the life, but I picked a day that was too hectic to put filming on top of it. So let's go with a happy medium, try to do a week in the life. So we'll see where this vlog goes. But like I mentioned, it is September. Today is Labor Day. And I was going to film a video today for my Mostera series, but everybody's at home. So it's going to be noisy to film. So I'm just gonna vlog today. And the moment September also started, it also started to feel like fall, which I love, but it's also time to start thinking about my plans and transitioning them into cooler weather. So I have like a huge to-do list on that one from taking care of the plants that I'm currently propagating. A lot of them are due for repotting and plants that do need to be repotted. And then I do have some plants outside and have to make decisions on which plants I'm bringing in, which plants I'm giving up. And that goes the same for the plants that I have indoors. And if you've been following me for a while, you know I have been into this decluttering kick when it comes to my plant collection and pretty much everything else in my life. But mainly on my plants and I have a goal to keep my plant collection from over 100 to under 80 by the time I do my fall plant collection video. And I've been quite on track on that one but there's still a lot of plants that I need to make my final decisions on because it is September and some of them I just have to decide whether to give away, sell, or trade. I do have a couple of plant swaps coming up one September. I don't know when the other one is coming up, but it's going to be at H Street Farms again. But yeah, but there's no way I'm going to be doing all those to-do lists today, not even for the entire week, but I'm going to start dealing with my propagations. I actually have someone coming in a few minutes. They say they're gonna come between 12.30 to one. Oh, they just messaged me, hold on. Yeah, so they're running about 10 minutes late because they ran into traffic. How they're running into traffic, DMV is crazy. Honestly, there's no more real rush hour in the DMV area. All day is just rush hour, but though, I'm sorry that they hit traffic, but I hope they like the cuttings that they're picking up for me. Um, they wanted to trade, but I was like, they don't need to trade. These are just cuttings that I'm trying to get rid of, and I'm also trying to declutter, so I don't need any more plants. But yeah, so let me show you what I'm currently still propagating in my prop station, and let you know what I plan to do with them. So here is my prop station. Like I said, I just clean it, so I'm pretty confident with showing it to you, but usually the test tube would form a lot of algae because the light hits it and it's transparent. I do have a grow light up there. It is turned off right now because I'm trying to train my plants in receiving less light as we head towards the fall and winter season. So I still do turn it on if it's a gloomy day, but today is a sunny day, so I don't have the grow lights on. And with this one, I actually took out a lot of cuttings from here already. And I've arranged it pretty much the way I've always wanted to arrange it. Like down here, I have my syndapsis cuttings. These are the apropenums. And these are just like some random ones. I have the Mostera aurea over there. My Hoya compacta variegata. Uh, Philodendron bantrianum. A spider bunny. And a raven zz with some micans. And this one is a manjula pothos, but as you can see, the white variegation is purely white. So I'm trying to see if it could hold that variegation, that there is no green speckles on the white variegation, which would make it a harlequin pothos. But we will see. And I have a Shangri-La pothos here, an emerald, and this one is my Epipenum pinatum variegata. Not very variegated right now, but some of the leaves are. My skeleton key pothos, these are all propagated from this two nodes, which the original leaves are dying out, but I'm still trying to propagate more from the main nodes and see if I could get more plants out of it. And down here, I have a Syndapsis Jade Satin, and this one is a Silver Hero. And this is a Tribii Dark Form that someone actually traded with me after they saw my Syndapsis video. And this one is a cutting from my Silver Splash. This is a Syndapsis Moonlight. And this one is actually just an Argerius. Yeah, and here is the Raphidophora Tetraspreba cuttings that someone is picking up for me. I might add a couple more cuttings from here that I don't really need or want after they propagate it. 
So I think this Synapsis Trivia and Moonlight, I don't know if they want it, but they could have it. I mean, it's a free plant, it's a free cutting. Nobody would say no to that, right? And a couple of the micans and the micans as well. These, oh, they're already outside, but here are the cuttings that I'm about to give them. So today I'm doing a daily harvest unboxing. I did receive this for free and I am a daily harvest affiliate and I did my very first daily harvest unboxing in my August vlog so if you haven't seen that I'll link it somewhere up here and also down in the description. So daily harvest makes it very easy for us to eat our fruits and vegetables every day and stock up our home with delicious food and they have over 90 choices in their website. And as mentioned this is my second box that I received from daily harvest and I get to try six more flavors from them. So let's open up this box and see what I got this time. And what I love about Daily Harvest too is everything is sustainably packaged. So all of this could be recycled curbside. So let's open it up. And it came with a welcome packet with another fridge magnet that says Big Veg Energy. And let's see what I got. The first one is their flatbread, which is the artichoke and spinach. This has broccoli, artichoke, spinach, cauliflower, tahini, and thyme. This is the first flatbread that I'm trying out from them. So very excited to try out this one. And I got another harvest bowl, which is the Brussels sprouts and lime pad thai. In the first box, I got the tomato and lentil bolognese and the carrot and coconut soup, which I both loved, which is actually my favorite from the first box that I got. So this time I'm excited to try the Brussels sprouts and lime pad thai. And I got a few more smoothies. I really love the cold brew, but I wanted to try other flavors that they had. And this one is the mango and papaya. I wanted to get this initially in the first box. So I'm really excited to have it in my second box. This one has mango, pineapple, acerola, papaya, and macadamia. And the other one that I got is the carrot and cinnamon smoothie, which has banana, carrot, walnut, sweet potato, cinnamon, nutmeg. And this one is supposed to taste like carrot cake. So I'm very excited about this one as well. And this one is the hazelnut and chocolate bites. I'm excited about this one because this would make such a great snack. This one has avocado, hazelnut, cacao, chia, reshi, and vanilla bean. Actually, let's try one now because I'm really excited about this one. So this is great when you have like your chocolate cravings. This would definitely solve that fix. And it looks like this. Mm, it's real good. And the last one that I got is the Strawberry Rich Rippled Berry Compote Scoops. And this is their ice cream. This one has coconut, strawberry, dragon fruit, raspberry, vanilla bean, and probiotic. So I'm also excited to try out this one. I know summer is ending and we're heading to fall, but it's always a good time to have ice cream. And, and all of Daily Harvest products are gluten-free, dairy-free, and plant-based. So if you have any dietary concerns when it comes to gluten and when it comes to dairy, you don't have to worry about any of the Daily Harvest products. So Daily Harvest do help me with my goal of eating healthier because like I mentioned in my August vlog, sometimes I meal prep, but there are times that I couldn't and I end up just eating junk food. So with this stocked up in my fridge, I could just grab it. They're so easy to prepare, very quick to prepare, and they're delicious. So if I need a quick lunch or a quick snack or even breakfast or dinner, I could just grab one of these and I'll have a delicious but healthy meal. But yeah, if you want to try Daily Harvest for yourself, you can get up to $40 off your first box using my code MYRACISLIFE and by using my affiliate link, which is down in the description. So please go do check it out. Hi everyone, it's Tuesday, September 7th. I just finished filming. I was able to finish a lot of the videos from my Monstera series and I think I just have to film the one for the Thai constellation and maybe for the Monstera Deliciosa. I didn't really plan on making a Monstera Deliciosa specific video, but I know I did get requests for it. So, but it's not going to fit on my schedule, at least for the Thursday ones. So I think I'm just going to add it in one of my Sunday videos in a vlog type situation. So if you do have questions on Monstera Deliciosa care propagation, let me know and I'll make sure to include it in next week's vlog or Sunday video. But yeah, so now that I've finished filming, I do have quite a bit of work that I need to finish 
because there's a lot of stuff that I need to catch up on not just for YouTube but for like everything else so I'm, I'm going to do a little bit more work I was going to repot a couple of plants yesterday I didn't get to repot them I'll try to do the repotting later on this afternoon after I finished some work hi everyone so right now we're outside we're at our deck and I'm going to be repotting a couple of my propagations that are due for transplanting and then if you have time I'm going to show you around and let let you see the plants that I currently have outside and see which ones I should be bringing in giving up and just you know what are my general plants to transition my plants into the fall and winter season putting my Cebu blue pothos the skeleton key pothos and I'm gonna be combining my brantianum all together and I might also start making a couple more propagations with this one so this one I don't plan to keep so I might use this for a plant swap or sell it eventually if I don't get to trade with it so I'm gonna put it in a nursery pot that I don't need actually I'm gonna use this one instead so, uh, and put this one here This is still the same soil mix that I created earlier this year and I have some leftover Yep, and that is that one, very quick and easy. And then this is my skeleton key pothos, the propagations that I have. I right, cut off the ends that looks like they're about to rot. Guess I don't want them bringing that into the soil. But, yep. And I think I'm gonna use this one but let me wash it out first I'll be right back okay I'm back with a cleaner pot and I am going to pot the skeleton key pothos put some at the bottom and try to pot it up Okay, I need to clean this up, but I think I should be preparing the cuttings to have a moss bowl because it is a skeleton key pothos and in order for it to mature faster, it does need support. So I am going to give them some sort of support right now so that they could just be on their way for that. But they're going to need a proper one, but I'm putting in this temporarily just so there's already like a spot for it, you know. And I'll tie it up to the pseudo trellis later on, but this is good for now. And then now for this, the Brantianum, I am going to make propagations of this one because as you can see, I don't really like how this is growing. So I'm going to cut it up and propagate it over here and over here All right. so this will go into here 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 and here and this one um, I'm taking it out of the terracotta pot because it dries out way too quickly so I'm gonna put it in a plastic pot instead
And there it is for this one. It doesn't look much, but hopefully it would have a better growth pattern. So I've finished repotting, so I'm going to show you the plants that I still have outside or put outside for the growing season. And now that we're transitioning into fall, the weather is starting to get colder. I have to start thinking about which plants I'm bringing back in and which plants are just going to stay out and hopefully survive the winter season or plants that I'm just going to give away. So let's start with the one that I have on the baker's rack and let's check out the plants that I have in there. So you'll see a lot of moms are just going to stay out so we don't even have to bother those. Shaflero plant, not my plant but most likely going to go back in. This is the Cebu Blue Pothos that I just repotted. I'll probably trade or sell that. Same goes with this Pilea Papramodis that I have outside. Most likely going to get given away or sold. Down here is the pineapple plant, definitely bringing that back in. I have an Agronema over there. Not sure if I'm going to bring that in. Most likely that's going to be given away or just stay outside. And on this side, I do have my mango plant. Definitely going back in, but as you can see, it has grown so tall. So I might likely trim off the top again, but we will see. And of course, my ficus audrey definitely going back in. I was trying to get it to branch and I was successfully able to do it. I'll be sharing how I did that in an upcoming ficus video. And my avocado plant where I planted some tradescantia at the base of it. I am not so sure about this plant. This is one of those plants that I feel like I have to keep it because I had it a couple of years. I grew this from seed, yada, yada, yada. But I'm not really severely attached to it. And as much as I love Tradescantia, I'm not really particularly in love with this variety. So not sure what I'm going to do with this one. If I find space for it inside, I'll bring it back in. But if not, then I'll probably just end up giving this away or selling it. Same kind of deal with this spider plant. I really like it, but at the same time, I do have a bunny spider plant in my room. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. Trying to sell it. Don't know if I'll keep it. This, my autograph plant, definitely going back inside. And here is my jalapeno, second year in a row. I could easily buy another jalapeno plant. But when I winterize this, it actually grows fruits the next year like it did this year and it is a very prolific grower so I might still keep it again if I have space inside the house definitely bring it back in this aloe vera not sure what I'm doing with this I might try to take out the babies and repot them this time before I bring it back in if I am bringing it back in and maybe repot it into a smaller pot and use this pot for something else but I don't know, or I might just end up selling it too. My Thermatophyllum venatophytum definitely going back in, but I might have to trim off some of the leaves so that it will fit inside. Here I have my eucalyptus, definitely going to be cutting off some of the stems and use it. But as far as bringing this back in, definitely bring it back in, but I will be pruning it a lot and hopefully it will come back next year with bigger and larger stems and leaves. Okay, over here my Mostara Deliciosa. This is actually the mother plant. So this is like the base of the root of the Mostara that I have inside. But it was just all nodes when I repotted it. But now it has pushed out lots of new leaves. It's actually starting to put out fenestrated ones. This one, definitely going back inside, but I have to figure out where to place this. I do have a lot of Mostara del Sosa already. If I could give it away or sell it, I probably would, but we will see. This Alucasia, it is planted on the ground. It will be fine. It will grow back next year. And here is my Birds of Paradise, or what I have left of it. This one is going back inside if it's 
still surviving by the end of fall. <laughs> this Maraphidophora tetrasperma, this is a tissue culture and admittedly this is doing a lot better than the one I currently have inside but I was actually trying to get rid of this. I bought it to a plant swap, nobody would want to take it but it was a much smaller plant then so I don't know, I'm probably gonna try sell this one off and if no one wants it, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. I mean, I'll probably just give it away if nobody wants it. And again, if there's space inside the house, I'll bring it back in for next growing season to be outside again. But it's really like growing so much and you can see how long the aerial roots are. It's crazy. So kind of like hesitant to let it go, but we will see. All right, this Sanadu, I've been trying to get rid of this as well trying to sell it but it has grown so big I don't think I'll be able to bring it back inside but again we will see but most likely selling this off or giving it away just want to take a look at our banana tree this one comes back every year so no need to worry about that but let me show you something it has grown babies this year like this small one it has grew this small one and this other one so that's kind of exciting here on the outside of course none of this are gonna go back inside but I just want to show you my peppers this is my most successful I guess crop this year and as you can see this bell pepper is turning yellow I already harvested one the other day that was orange I could harvest them green but I'm waiting for them to all change colors before I harvest them this tomato plants are on their way out. I could probably start harvesting them. I'll be back for you all. And right here, these alocasias are planted on the ground. They will come back next year like they did this year. I do have a monstera over here that is in a pot. I'm just going to leave it there, see what happens, experiment with it. But as you can see, that plant, that leaf is kind of not doing well, but we'll see what happens with it. And I have a thematophyllum venatophytum that I planted on ground. I'm also going to leave it here, see how well it does over the winter and if it comes back in spring. This is like me, my last tomato harvest for this season. This tomato season wasn't as good as last year's. But at least the peppers did a lot better this year compared to last year. It's Wednesday, September 8th. So I had a pretty much productive morning already. It's actually about to be noon. It's 11.55. I'm about to eat a little bit before I head to my doctor's appointment. It's an eye doctor appointment as at Costco so I'm actually gonna do a little bit of Costco shopping and then also might head to Joanne Fabrics if I could leave the house earlier than my appointment just to check out some craft materials for Cricut because I recently got a Cricut machine if I haven't shown you the unboxing I'll show it to you here right now and already started a couple of projects and I kind of want to do a bit more just practice a little bit more on a Cricut machine and it's crazy to get into the Cricut world because but I do like learning new things and learning new skills so I'm really excited about learning how to make more crafts and DIY projects using my Cricut machine and I'm really excited about that I am a Cricut affiliate though although everything Cricut that I own I did pay for with my own money so if you're also thinking about getting into Cricut yourself I do have an affiliate link down in the description it will help me a lot if you use it but yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and go lunch I think my laundry is done too at least I was able to do laundry but now I have to fold it when, it, when I come back, but yeah, I'm gonna go get lunch. I think I'm gonna go try the daily harvest flatbread since I don't really have much time to make lunch. But yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and eat. You can get mad all you want, sweetheart, but no treats. You can have blueberries if you want. Chicago.
calls me day and night I'm sorry girl, you just don't make me feel right I never meant to make you cry, you were right Just leave me, I'm not gonna let that happen right. Costco We have the cactus and the succulent arrangements from Costa Farms and they have the live trans collection here but they have it in a much nicer pot one is in this really nice spot I kind of wish I waited to get mine because I like this pot a lot better than the one they have at Lowe's they have it in this gray pot as well it looks prettier than the ones that they sell at Lowe's and it's just $17.99 decor is also now out at Costco. They got Vienna sausage, vinegar, olive oil. So I'm just got done with Costco. I did get my prescription for my contacts and my glasses. I'm just going to order them online and I was able to buy the stuff that I'm supposed to buy. I did buy something off the list, which are color changing cups, which I'm going to show you when I get home. But now I'm just going to head home. It is so hot. Uh, yep. And I have low tire pressure. Hi everyone, it's Thursday, September 9th, and as you can tell by the time, it's already 6.34 p.m., so it's pretty late during the day. I didn't really vlog throughout the day. I did wake up early today at 6 a.m. because I had a lot to do. I finally folded my laundry, although I still have to put it away, and I was able to go to the gym. And it was raining in the morning, so I had to take out my dog around lunchtime for his walk and it was actually a pretty nice walk because it was a perfect fall weather and it was overcast, it wasn't sunny at all and I think it was around 75 degrees. But after that, not really much. I just did some work, had lunch, watched a couple of 9-11 movies on Netflix which sounds a bit dark and depressing but 9-11 20th anniversary is coming up so it's good to observe that. And yeah, so I just continued working and editing this video. So that's pretty much it, but I did say yesterday that I'm going to show you the color changing cups that I got from Costco. I don't know why I had to mention it or why I have to show you, but since I mentioned it there, here it is. This is the color changing tumblers and this is 12 in here. It comes with a lid and straw. I'm not going to take it out because it's kind of like, it's going to make a lot of mess. But basically what it looks like, the confetti one looks like this. And also last night I started another Cricut project, which is basically this one. So this one is supposed to be for a Starbucks cup and you customize kind of like the wording around the logo that's supposed to be in here. But right now it's just my sticker. So it's a cheap tumbler to be practicing on instead of jumping onto Starbucks tumblers right away. And this one says plants, yes, you maybe. I think it turned out okay. At first I thought it was a little bit big, but now that I slept on it, I think it's pretty okay. The sticker do look awkward in the middle, but we will see. I'm also thinking of just creating a design that looks like the Starbucks logo, but it is a plant lady or a plant person. But we'll see if I can do that. I'm gonna practice some more. And I also did this Cricut project. This is the very first one that I actually did. This one also says plants, yes, you may be. And I put it on a terracotta pot. But the problem with this though is I didn't realize that the vinyl that I used over here was a removable one, not a permanent one. So this would likely peel off very easily. So I'm thinking of painting this pot and then removing the vinyl. So it would be a reverse. It would be painted white and then the lettering would be terracotta showing through. It looks nice like this, but I haven't potted anything in there yet. So I'm kind of like concerned if I do pot something in here and I start watering it as you know, terracotta is porous, then this one will just easily come off because it's removable, not permanent. 
that probably do a DIY fall projects using Cricut and also not using Cricut because not everybody has Cricut but yeah so I'm very excited this is like a very good first attempt I'm but since I have 12 tumblers I don't know what I'm gonna do with all 12 tumblers I might use it for giveaways if I get better really quick I might try to sell them on my Etsy but I think for now they're just gonna be for giveaways or just gifts for friends and family for the upcoming holiday season. But what do you think of my first attempt into cricket tumbling or whatever it is called? But yeah, so that is pretty much my Thursday. But yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow for the last day of this A Week in a Life vlog. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Friday, September 10th, and today was pretty much a similar day as yesterday. I just did a bunch of work to finish out the work week, but during lunchtime, I did take another step into trying to make another Cricut tumbler, and this is what I came up with. I think I like this one a lot better. It just looks a little bit cleaner with the white and green, and in the middle, I tried to create an outline of my logo and tried to print it out in Cricut. Some of the smaller pieces were kind of hard to weed out, but I think it's a good first attempt, but this one is still the removable vinyl. I still haven't purchased a permanent white vinyl. So this one is probably not going to last long, but this is just a trial. This is just a test run and I actually didn't center it quite well. Like the back is like so close. It's supposed to be right opposite of this one, but it's not exactly that. But it's okay. Like I said, this is just like a trial. Me just trying to test out different designs and different techniques in using the design space in Cricut and making designs on a Tumblr. There's a couple more that I would like to try and hopefully I will share that with you in my upcoming DIY video. But yeah, and right now I'm a little bit dressed up as you can see because I'm meeting up a friend for happy hour slash dinner. This is the friend that I went to her wedding shower to in my August vlog and she just came back from her honeymoon so we're gonna go meet up and catch up at the National Harbor so I'm not really gonna vlog that but I'm going to take some clips of the scenery because I think they have a really good rooftop view and also maybe a, a little bit of a tour of the MGM hotel so the time is 4 30 I'm meeting her at 5 30 and I have to walk and feed my dog before I leave so I am gonna go do that now but before I do I'm gonna switch out my phone case this is a phone case that I recently got from Pella case and I love Pella case I've been a customer of them for two years now but not only they are sustainably made after you're no longer using them you can actually compost them so I got this during their BOGO sale so when I purchased this, I got this one for free and I really like this one. So I got a matching AirPod case, which is this one. And because I bought three items, I got 40% off my total. So not only I got a free phone case, I also got 40% off my order. So I'm just going to switch it off because this one has the wallet insert on it. And this one already has my card and my license. So I'm just going to switch that up and that's what it looks like. And kind of like with Cricut, I am a Pella affiliate, but as I mentioned, I purchased this products myself and I have been a long time customer of Pella even before I became their affiliate. If you're interested in purchasing a Pella phone case yourself, my affiliate link is down in the description and they always have sales so do follow them also on Instagram so you'll be notified when they are having their sales so you can get the best deal on your phone cases. But yeah, so I know this video had a lot of affiliate marketing inserted in it. And because you follow me on Instagram, I kind of mentioned there in my stories, if you also follow my stories over there, is that I try not to put a lot of affiliate marketing on my YouTube. So they were getting dumped on my Instagram, but now I feel like my Instagram is getting cluttered with them. So I wanted to make a video where I had I kind of like most of my affiliate marketing stuff all in one video. So I'm not inserting them in my other videos because I'd rather not do that and just have them all in my one video. So thank you so much for bearing through that. But again, if you are interested in any of the products that I mentioned in this video or in my August vlog, please do check them out. All the links are down in the description. But of course, you don't have to purchase anything from any of my affiliate partnerships. You're watching my videos, watching them all the way through, liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, writing down comments below is more than enough support that you could give me and my channel. But if you're interested in any of the products that I mentioned anyways, if you use my affiliate link, I would earn a small commission from those companies and that would help me and my channel a little bit more. So thank you so much for watching my A Week in Life vlog. I'm going to go ahead 
feed and walk my dog and meet up my friend for happy hour slash dinner and I'll catch you at my next one. Bye!